As you know, the left is trying to shame Christians. They try and shame us. Us. I'm a very proud Christian, actually. We're taking the, the bullets, taking the arrows. I'm taking them for you, and I'm so honored to take them. You have no idea. November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. For many Christian nationalists, Donald J. Trump is the leader they have been looking for. They believe if he becomes president, they can make their vision of what America should be a reality. And there is something he is more than willing to encourage at his rallies on the campaign trail. Anthea Peter Catherine still with us. Anthea, have we ever had a political candidate like Trump? I mean, there are some Christian voters who see him as their savior. No, we have not had anybody see a presidential candidate as savior. And for evangelicals, this is where I, you know, am personally appalled because there, for evangelicals, there is one, only one savior, and that's Jesus Christ. But the way they think about Trump is that he is a divine figure. In the first round of his presidency, they compared him to King Cyrus. There's all this artwork of Jesus standing behind him in the Oval Office. There were all these memes that happened in the first round. But what has happened now since 2020, and he lost, is that now he's taking up sort of tying himself into a persecution complex. Look, they are doing this to me. I am your savior. I'm the one to do this. So it was no mistake that he started to sell the Bible on Holy Week. Right. And last year he did the same thing. He talked about how they are trying to persecute him. So this narrative of persecution is tying into evangelical beliefs about their own persecution and what they perceive to be persecution. And he's the perfect person for them. So in other words, it doesn't matter if he's had three wives. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff we thought would matter to evangelicals. What matters to them is that they see him as a suffering savior, but a suffering savior for their causes and for them. Peter, back in 2016, Trump told some of his supporters that they were under siege. He said that Christianity will have power again. Religious extremism has been part of his rap for years, but now it is different. What do you hear him telling supporters today? Well, I just think that he's he's uh, ratcheted up, um, and the, the language that he's using is more violent um, and more and more threatening. Um, yeah, there's a psychological accommodation that's that's happened. There was some resistance, not not much, not obviously nearly as much as there should have been when Trump came onto the scene. But with every transgression that he made, uh, Christian nationalists and a lot of Christians who are not nationalists, but just evangelical Christians, made their inner peace with Donald Trump, and uh, he changed them much more than um, than they changed they changed him. Uh, and I want to say one other thing, which I think is important to understand in this context. Kristen DeMay is a historian at Calvin University, and she wrote a very good book called Jesus and John Wayne. And one of her arguments mm -hmm. is that Donald Trump is the personification of a lot of values that the white evangelical movement had for decades and decades. A lot of people who don't follow the movement think, and understandably so, isn't there this massive hypocrisy on Trump with his depraved life, moral life, personal life? How could they could like him? Again, that's true, but that's not the full story. It's the cruelty that he embodies that unfortunately, tragically, shamefully uh, resonates uh, with them. So there, there's something about him, and we saw this in the primaries in 2016. We see it again you know, this year in the primaries. When Republicans have choices, conservative alternatives to Donald Trump, non-corrupt alternatives to Donald Trump, successful uh, governors like Nikki Haley, they reject her, they reject them in overwhelming numbers. That means there's something about Trump that draws uh, them to uh, him to them, um, which which is uh, a real uh, a real shame. Catherine, you wrote that right wing conspiracy theories have never been more bloodthirsty. We talked about it in the last segment. We have seen political violence become a reality. Uh, January 6th was clearly that I want to understand if and how Christian nationalism played a role in January 6th, and do you think there'll be more violence ahead? Well, uh, the movement leaders absolutely played a role in January 6th. They spread election lies in the run-up to January 6th. Uh, the Conservative Action Project, an organization affiliated with the Council for National Policy, issued a memo 
uh, telling it's uh, it's this is one of the key networking organizations of the uh, religious right telling leaders that they should uh, and their uh, allied uh, political allies that uh, the electoral vote should be contested. So and and not only that, there were a number of uh, Christian nationalist leaders who actually participated in the Jericho marches who that preceded uh, the January sixth uh, coup attempt. So, um, you know, you mentioned conspiracism and disinformation. This is unfortunately a really big part of the movement. The movement uh, leaders know very well if you can separate people from the facts, you can control them, you can control their behavior, uh, and you control, can control their vote. So a lot of the folks who participated in January 6, a lot of the folks who attend these other sort of conspiracy fests like Reawaken America tours, I don't know if you know about that, there's these sort of traveling pro-Trump conspiracy roadshows that take places in megachurches and attract thousands of uh, attendees. Uh, they just sort of spread lies, uh, all different kinds of lies. There's a lot of QAnon. There's a lot of um, great replacement and other conspiracies. But the main lie that they're spreading is the idea that Donald Trump is their savior. He's a really terrific guy. The election of 2020 was stolen. And unfortunately, um, they're really priming a, a, a section of the American public to um, become sort of authoritarian voters. They are deeply entangled in Trump's 2024 campaign. And Thea, what could another Trump administration look like with some of these guys at the helm? Well, it could look really bad because basically what you have now is called Project 2025, which is a piece that's been put together by the Heritage Foundation, where they talk about how they will a turn... A 900, 900 pages, pages. manifesto, yes, really. basically, where they are going to change all these different roles of places in government, how they're going to put their own people in, what kind of rules will change because of this. They are already interviewing people. And I think that for people who just look, oh, this is just another project, they have had time to think about what they've wanted to do since 2020. And this Project 2025, I think, is the most fearful thing. The other thing I would say is that, you know, you heard Donald Trump yesterday say, well, I'm not really going to be involved in abortion. I'm going to kick this back to the states, right? That's an obfuscation. They will he's go. He's the reason. He's the reason the why this is decisions are happening. being made in these Exactly. States. But he's doing a nice little feint so that people won't see this and that he can get women's votes. But the way that I would put it is the way a friend said it to me. It's like if women vote for Donald Trump, it's like uh, chickens voting for Colonel Sanders. And, you know, that's crazy to say, but it's just the truth. And I think that, you know, these kinds of projects, whether they're on the state level or the national level, where we can look at book banning, we can look at how um, you can't teach ethnicity in certain places in schools where people have to actually get permission for their kids to learn about African-American history during Black History Month, OK, because that's woke in Florida. All right. So these kinds of things are going to be entrenched because they want a theocracy. And this is the thing that I can't stress to people enough, that you need to understand that it's not just about abortion. It's not just about, you know, all of these other little bitty things like books and all of this. This is about changing the entire structure. And for people who say they believe in freedom, they don't believe in everybody else's freedom. They want freedom for themselves, but they don't want it for the rest of us who who are living in this nation and don't want to live by those rules because we may or may not believe them. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.